The Sumerian civilization, which emerged around 4500 BC in Mesopotamia, was responsible for the construction of large cities and the creation of the first system of writing, known as cuneiform on clay tablets. During archaeological excavations in Iraq in 1849, a discovery was made of 14 clay tablets with Sumerian writings. These tablets revealed the story of the Anunnaki gods, which is considered one of the most fantastic stories of all time. According to ancient Sumerian manuscripts, there is a planet called Nibiru that orbits close to Earth every 3,600 years. The planet is inhabited by a group of beings called the Anunnaki, who face several challenges due to abrupt changes in the climate and atmosphere. To survive they had to rely on advanced technology, alchemy, and magic. Their solution was to obtain gold, a purifying metal, which brought them to Earth about 445,000 years ago. The Anunnaki became the first astronaut to colonize our planet. According to ancient Mesopotamian mythology, the Anunnaki, a group of deities, built the grand city of Iridu, which included a magnificent garden called Eden. The Anunnaki used slaves from another alien race, known as the Aiji, to extract gold. However, a rebellion by the Aiji sparked the first war on Earth, which led the Anunnaki to create a new race of hybrid and submissive human beings. Over time, humans developed skills under the guidance of the Anunnaki, which led to a fond relationship between the two groups. However, the overpopulation in the cities of Eden and Iridu resulted in many people being expelled from their homes and forced to live in the wildlands. Millennia later, Nibiru came close to Earth, causing an environmental disaster and a catastrophic flood. To save their creation, the Anunnaki constructed large boats that remained afloat for days before reaching normal water levels. After their city was destroyed, the Anunnaki decided to return to Nibiru, but not before imparting knowledge to humans. This included architecture, mathematics, music, and writing. They also established a monarchy system and ordered the construction of temples known as ziggurats. These structures were aligned with constellations to guide the Anunnaki's return to Earth. The Sumerian texts mention some Anunnaki as the primary ones, but do not specify their exact number. The most powerful deity was Ennu, who represented heaven and possessed infinite wisdom. The goddess Ki represented the Earth, and her union with Ennu gave birth to the Anunnaki. Notable Anunnaki included Enlil, Lord of Air and Storms, and Enki, God of Oceans and Rivers. The moon had a ruler named Nana, while Yutu personified the sun and defended justice. Inanna, Yutu's twin sister, was the goddess of fertility, war, and political power. The Anunnaki cult was shared by many Mesopotamian peoples and evolved while maintaining a detailed essence. The Sumerian account of the Anunnaki is rich in scientific and astronomical references, but still shrouded in mystery. The Anunnaki are believed to reside on the planet Nibiru, which is located in our solar system. They are an ancient and highly advanced race of beings who are often revered as gods by humans. However, even these powerful beings are not immune to the harsh environmental conditions on their planet. Over time, a large crack has developed in the ozone layer of Nibiru. This crack is widening with each passing decade, causing global warming and wreaking havoc on crops and animal life. To combat this issue, the Anunnaki discovered that by introducing gold dust particles into the atmosphere, they could slow down the expansion of the crack and even reverse it slightly. Unfortunately, Nibiru is a planet with limited mineral resources, and gold is a scarce commodity. This scarcity has led to food shortages and ultimately, a rebellion among the population. Groups of rebels challenged the central government of Nibiru, and chaos was about to sweep through every city on the planet. Despite his noble lineage, Alalu attacked and killed the king of Nibiru in an attempt to take control. However, Prince Anu, the rightful heir by lineage, engaged in a public duel with Alalu. After a fierce fight, Anu emerged victorious and was chosen as the new king of Nibiru. Alalu was judged for his actions, but before the sentence could be handed down, he managed to steal a ship and escape from Nibiru. King Anu decided that exile was punishment enough for Alalu, and committed his efforts to saving the planet. He realized that the only viable solution would be to find precious gold on other celestial bodies. Numerous space expeditions were conducted to explore the planets that were nearest to Nibiru, but they yielded no significant results as gold deposits were found to be scarce. On the third closest planet to the sun, however, a breakthrough was made. The planet was a true paradise, rich in water, diverse animal and plant life, and abundant gold. The exiled Alalu was responsible for this discovery and was subsequently pardoned for his critical contribution. The planet was named Kai by the Anunnaki, which was later known as Earth. Mesopotamia was chosen by the Anunnaki to establish a city named Eridu. King Anu's eldest son Enki was appointed as the overseer of the city, while his father continued to rule Nibiru. After completing the construction of Eridu in just seven days, the Anunnaki began extracting gold using forced labor from an alien race called the Eji. After using massive amounts of gold mined from Earth to restore Nibiru, the Ajiji, Ichi, organized a rebellion against the Anunnaki. 
This rebellion resulted in a great war that caused significant damage to the city of Uridu and led to the collapse of many gold mines. The Anunnaki realized that forced labor was unsustainable and decided to create a new race, humans, using advanced technology. Initially, the method of conception involved using the womb of a female primate, but this resulted in grotesque creatures. The Anunnaki then turned to using the essence of a male primate and modifying its DNA, which led to the birth of the first human, Adamu. To enable human procreation, the Anunnaki also conceived a woman named Haiva. Humans were developed in the city of Uridu and became capable of mining gold, building houses, and cultivating crops. In the past, humans were rewarded by being allowed to visit Eden, a sacred garden created by the Anunnaki. However, the beauty of human women started attracting the Anunnaki, leading to forbidden relationships. Enki, the king of Eridu, fell in love with a human woman, and their relationship resulted in the birth of Arapaho. As time passed, humans displayed violent behavior and an unhealthy desire for gold and power. The two oldest sons of Enki, Cain and Abel, competed to please the Anunnaki. In a shocking twist, Cain ended up killing Abel, marking the first instance of one human killing another. As a result, Cain was exiled from Eridu, and was doomed to live forever without finding peace for his soul. There were other similar cases later, and despite the Anunnaki's orders, humans began to procreate excessively. Due to the growing population, Eridu was no longer able to provide sufficient shelter and food. Since Nibiru had been recovered and the mining of gold was no longer necessary, the Anunnaki decided to evict humans from their sacred city and garden. Humans were then condemned to live in the fields and forests. We're going to take a trip into the mysterious realm of ancient mythology today. We're delving deeply into the fabled trinity of Enki, Enlil, and Anu in this episode, which has enthralled audiences for decades. You'll want to experience all of our mythical adventures, so make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell before we reveal their secrets. As we investigate the true trinity, Enki, Enlil and Anu get ready to solve the riddles of both gods and humans. Within the realm of classical mythology, there is a heavenly trinity that significantly influenced the fates of both gods and humans. Three well-known Mesopotamian deities, Enki, Enlil, and Anu, make up this trinity. These gods, each possessing unique qualities and abilities, make up an intricate and captivating story that still fascinates academics and fans today. We need to examine each of these gods' unique functions and traits in order to comprehend the relevance of each one. The god of creation, freshwater, and wisdom was Enki, the wise creator god, also referred to as Ea, frequently portrayed as a bearded man with a scepter within a cascading vase. He represented the Euphrates River. Among the gods, he was the greatest problem solver due to his unmatched intelligence. He created the first humans out of clay and gave them the spark of life. He was the designer of humanity. The defenders of heavenly law and order were Enlil, the powerful lord of command, and Lo, the god of wind, storms, and air. Being able to control the elements made him a powerful figure in the pantheon. He was in charge of keeping the universe in harmony and making sure that the gods' tasks would be completed on Earth. He was frequently seen as a strict and powerful person. The Sumerian pantheon had a supreme god named Anu who ruled over all other gods, including Enki and Enlil, and represented the heavens. Anu was the supreme fount of divine power, and his jurisdiction encompassed affairs of cosmic import. The dynamics of this trinity were revealed by the Sumerian pantheon, which took into account how they interacted inside the broader Sumerian pantheon. Not only were Enki, Enlil, and Anu co-workers, but they were also part of a divine family. They were half-brothers who had different mothers, but a common father in Anu. Their ties were deepened by this familial bond, which frequently had an impact on divine happenings. Even though they were related, Enki and Enlil often disagreed about issues related to heavenly authority and human fate. Enlil placed more emphasis on rigorous adherence to heavenly precepts, whereas Enki, the creator of humanity, valued nurture and compassion. Dramatic tales of gods meddling in human affairs, creation, and fate sprang from these struggles. The Trinity had a significant and long-lasting impact on human existence. Enki played a crucial role in the formation of mankind. 
giving clay figures life and enabling them to feel, think, and aspirate. His insight contributed to the spread of knowledge and the development of civilization. Enlil, on the other hand, demonstrated his power over human life and agriculture by controlling natural elements to produce fertility and prosperity or unleashing destructive storms, which in turn affected human fates. Because of Anu's cosmic authority, the fates of gods and mortals were inextricably linked, and his rulings and decisions had a significant impact on the cosmos as a whole. The god's influence, that of Enki, Enlil, and Anu, is not limited to folklore from antiquity. Enki's ancient wisdom, which is still relevant today, is a timeless representation of curiosity and problem-solving. In modern civilization, knowledge is still seen as the foundation for advancement. The legends of these gods continue to have an influence on religion and mythology, since they serve as inspiration for such tales. Other pantheons and stories of divine beings mirror their alliances and battles, a fascinating investigation of cosmic order, human creation, and divine dynamics may be found in the trinity of Enki, Enlil, and Anu. Their historical relevance is further shown by their continuing influence on human culture, religion, and mythology. Commonly requested questions. Did ancient civilizations worship Enki, Enlil, and Anu? Indeed, these deities played a significant role in the religious rituals of ancient Mesopotamia, especially in the Akkadian and Sumerian cultures. Which well-known myths feature these deities? The Enuma Elish, which describes the creation of the world and the battle for dominance between the gods Enki, Enlil, and Anu, is one well-known myth. Do contemporary religions draw inspiration from Sumerian mythology? Even though they are not exact, there are certain similarities between these gods' tales and components of contemporary religions, demonstrating mythology's continuing influence. Did the Sumerian pantheon include any additional significant gods? Yes, the Sumerian pantheon contained a large number of other gods and goddesses, each with its own roles and characters. Are these deities connected to any archaeological discoveries? Archaeological finds including temples and inscriptions, shed light on the veneration and devotion that ancient Mesopotamians had for Enki, Enlil, and Anu. This concludes our examination of the true trinity, Enki, Enlil, and Anu, for today. As much as we found it intriguing, the next video talks about the city of Enoch. Check out our other videos if you want to continue solving the riddles of ancient mythology. A wealth of information is waiting for you here. We appreciate you coming along for the ride. We appreciate your help so much. Ancient people's spiritual lives were greatly impacted by a vast array of gods and goddesses that we come across when we delve into the depths of our past, where myth and fact collide. Summer is one of the oldest of these civilizations and is frequently called the birthplace of human civilization. Their spiritual world consisted of an intricate web of gods, each with distinct tasks and responsibilities that ultimately determined the direction of the universe. Among this celestial hierarchy, one person shines out, Enki, who is also referred to as Ea in Babylonian and Akkadian mythology. An important place belonged to Enki, the Sumerian god of water, knowledge, mischief, and creation. He was regarded as the wise, clever, and creative master of the earth and the seas, one of Sumer's oldest towns and the birthplace of human civilization. The main sources of information on Enki and his contemporaries are antiquated manuscripts and inscriptions, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Enema Elis. The Earth and the Celestial Order, including Enki's birth and activities, are described in the Babylonian creation epic Enuma Elis. A classic work of ancient literature, the Epic of Gilgamesh offers insights into the divine world and Enki's place in it. When taken as a whole, these materials present a striking image of the Sumerian universe and offer a basis for further exploration of Enki's significance, particularly in relation to the beginnings and evolution of humanity. The Anunnaki are a distinct race of gods that reside in the center of Sumerian mythology. Their name means those of royal blood or offspring of Anu sky. In the Sumerian pantheon, the Anunnaki are important figures who are frequently connected to the worlds of the heavens, earth, and underworld. 
Their functions were diverse. They served as human destiny controllers, judges, and celestial administrators. The Anundaki were a complicated hierarchy of supernatural creatures rather than a single homogenous entity. The Anunnaki were often seen as being governed by the sky god Anu, but in reality his descendants, Enlil, the lord of the air, and Enki, the deity of water and wisdom, often held the reins to earthly affairs. Enki's territory mostly encompassed the aqueous chasm known as the Abzu or Absu, which was believed to be the origin of everything freshwater, including rain, rivers, and wells. However, his influence went beyond the particular connection to humanity and his purported involvement in our evolution that distinguished him and gave him a special position in the annals of antiquity. Investigating this specific facet takes us into the intriguing world of genetic engineering, creation myths, and the origins of humanity. Enki delves further into the world of iconography and symbols. The gods were portrayed by the ancient Sumerians in a variety of ways, with each symbol and quality having great meaning in highlighting their function as the source of life. He was the freshwater god. These inscriptions, which were written thousands of years ago on cuneiform tablets, provide evidence of the Sumerian way of life's cultural and spiritual ethos. Feeling proud of herself, Nima chooses to create multiple people, each with a distinct physical abnormality as a way to show off her skills. Then she issues Enki a challenge, either heal these creatures or find them a place in society. Giving each being a purpose instead of trying to cure the oddities Nima created, Enki demonstrates his creativity and wisdom. To uphold Sumerian beliefs about the beginning of humanity, a person who is unable to walk is assigned as an advisor to the king, while another who is incapable of giving birth is placed in the temple. We are going to switch from the story of Enki and Nimma to the old Sumerian story about the Anunnaki and their search for gold. This myth captures their desire for gold and emphasizes how important it was to the origins of humanity. The Sumerian cosmogony states that the Anunnaki originally arrived on Earth in search of gold, their home planet Nibiru, also known as the Planet of Crossing. According to Enki, the Master of Wisdom offered a remedy, the genesis of a new species. His idea was to genetically alter an already existing earthly being that bore a striking resemblance to the Anunnaki. This was the species that is now known as Homo erectus. Enki thought that by controlling the genetic structure of this being, they could make a creature that could do the work the Anunnaki found so difficult. This would not only bring the stories to a close, but it would also bring us to a critical point in the evolution of humanity, the birth of the Lulu Amalu, or primitive worker. The Lost Book of Enki, among other ancient books, describes an engrossing and complex process that went into its development. The phrase Lulu Amalu in ancient Sumerian accounts loosely translates to mixed worker. The word itself suggests a degree of genetic blending, implying the remarkable methods the Amanaki are supposed to have used. Frequently portrayed as the master shaper, Enki collaborates with Nimma to alter the genetic makeup of Homo erectus. Enki combined the genetic material of the Anunnaki with cells from Homo erectus. The fertilized egg was then inserted into the womb of a female Anunnaki surrogate after the fertilization process. The parallels between this story and the contemporary scientific practice of in vitro fertilization are striking. Eventually, under the direction of Enki, the master shaper, this process gave rise to a hybrid. These texts point to an unprecedented hybridization of Homo erectus with Anunnaki DNA, suggesting the earliest known cases of genetic alteration on our planet. Numerous analyses of these archaic writings, including Sakaria Sitchin's in the 12th planet, point to this astonishing possibility. Sitchin, who is renowned for his thorough investigation of historical societies, makes a strong argument for the Sumerian narratives being 243, which date to approximately 2200 BCE. This Akkadian cylinder seal, which is kept in the Vorderasiatisches Museum in Berlin, shows what looks to be a star map complete with the Sumerian interpretation of our solar system. Most importantly, there are Anunnaki and human figures gathered around an interesting object in the seal. According to Sitchin, this apparatus represents the creation chamber where the fertilized egg was placed, the stand-in Anunnaki. 
At this moment, humanity is bestowed with knowledge by the intelligence and cunning of Enki. Numerous ancient books recount and retell this pivotal event, which is possibly the beginning of human consciousness and signifies the dawn of civilization. One of the first known literary works, the Epic of Gilgamesh, features the semi-divine hero Gilgamesh searching for the meaning of life and death. Enki is the one who helps him along the way by giving him the information he needs to solve the riddles of life. Their autonomy and self-awareness are increased by this. In Sumerian mythology, the maze offer yet another important insight. They are said to be universal rules or divine decrees that Enki disobeys by imparting them to people. These so-called maze are seen by some academics as sophisticated scientific knowledge or talents signifying the advancement in human capabilities that sparked the emergence of civilization. The Sumerian king list contains a list of monarchs who ruled for incredibly lengthy periods of time, some for tens of thousands of years. From the perspective of Enki's influence, these mythical reigns may represent a time of rapid progress and cultural prosperity. The Sumerians who established the foundations of our civilization amid this purported genetic improvement challenged us to reconsider our theories regarding the ancestry of humans and the traits that set us apart as a species. As we make our way through the hallways of Sumerian culture, the fascinating story of the great Anunnaki departure comes into view. This historic event, which is recounted in multiple Sumerian sources, represents a turning point in human history. These old texts tell of a time when the Anunnaki made the decision to depart from Earth. Moreover, some theories contend that Enki made sure dormant genetic potential was activated. From the perspective of Enki's influence, these mythical reigns may represent a time of rapid progress and cultural prosperity. The Sumerians, who established the foundations of our civilization amid this purported genetic improvement, challenged us to reconsider our theories regarding the ancestry of humans and the traits that set us apart as a species. As we make our way through the hallways of Sumerian culture, the fascinating story of the great Anunnaki departure comes into view. This historic event, recounted in multiple Sumerian sources, represents a turning point in human history. These old texts tell of a time when the Anunnaki made the decision to depart from Earth. Moreover, some theories contend that Enki made sure dormant genetic potential was activated within humans before the great departure. It is hypothesized that these improvements were encoded in the human genome and programmed to appear across generations, which might account for the abrupt advances in a number of subsequent civilizations. Even if they are theoretical, these interpretations offer a fascinating viewpoint on Enki's last deed. His departure has a lasting impact on human history, whether it is through genetic improvements or the transfer of superior knowledge. This trip through the mythology of ancient Sumer is more than just a historical excursion. It is a challenge to explore this maze of antiquated tales in greater detail and solve the mystery of Enki. Each of us is encouraged by the stories we've read to carry on the investigation, ask questions, think critically, and develop our own interpretations of this gripping story. We are invited to solve the enigmas surrounding Enki and his influence on the development of humanity by the Sumerians, an extinct civilization that once flourished in the bountiful plains between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Thus, we take the enduring mystery of Enki with us as we leave the sun-baked remains of ancient Sumer and enter the world we know today. A story from the early days of civilization that never fails to pique our interest, excite our imagination, and entice us to explore the maze of our past a trip that is not- Have you ever wondered why ancient mythology shares so many similarities? Why do gods in various cultures have both human and animal characteristics? And what about the giants and hybrid creatures found in these ancient stories? There may be a connection that links these captivating tales together, found in ancient texts and religious scriptures. Today, we will explore the world of fallen angels, mythical creatures, and ancient gods to reveal the hidden secrets that are easily overlooked. Religious writings and enigmatic scriptures frequently provide the answers to the questions of our distant past. Now let's look at the ancient manuscript known as the Book of Giants, an apocryphal Jewish book that elaborates on the story found in the Book of Enoch. This passage contains a startling revelation. Fallen angels left their domains and started sinning against different natural creatures. It says, they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish. Their transgressions went beyond just mingling with other species. They started perverting the fundamental principles of the natural world. 
The interesting aspect though, is when you compare these deeds to the biblical story of corruption found in the book of Genesis. Genesis 6 11, 12 in the Bible states, The earth was full of violence and was also corrupt before God. And when God looked down upon the globe, he saw that it was tainted since every human had contaminated the planet. This striking portrayal of a violently ruined earth appears to be reminiscent of the chaotic planet left over after the strange deeds of the fallen angels, as told in the book of Giants. Is it possible that the old texts were recording the same apocalyptic happenings from several angles? The links are there, just waiting for us to join them. Taking these old manuscripts with us, we will examine the striking similarities between these religious stories and the realm of mythology by taking a trip through time and myth. This mythology, which spans many cultures, frequently features gods and other entities that bear striking similarities to the hybrids and crossbreeds we just covered. In the mythologies of their various nations, these creatures are frequently portrayed as gods or rulers. Beginning with the gods of ancient Egypt, the pantheon is replete with figures who combine animal and human characteristics, frequently signifying the union of animalistic might with human intelligence. Consider the deity Anubis, who has the head of a jackal and the body of a human. The occurrence of these mixed gods in Egyptian mythology is reminiscent of the Book of Giants' descriptions of strange matings and crossbreeding. In a similar vein, Greek mythology abounds in hybrid monsters and gods that harken back to the corruptions of the fallen angels. The Minotaur, a horrific cross between a bull and a human and the centaur, a half-human, half-horse creature, both represent the merging of species. These animals weren't just monsters, they were essential to the Greek mythos, either acting as roadblocks or mentors for brave adventurers. There are also a fair number of hybrid gods and animals in Babylonian mythology, for example, the Lamassu, a bull or lion with wings and a human head, is portrayed as a protecting deity. The Cyrus is a reptile-like monster with eagle-like feet, a long neck, and a body like a dragon. These animals resemble the hybrids and crossbreeds that the fallen angels produced, much like their Greek and Egyptian equivalents, as stated in the Giants book. However, the relationship extends beyond only physical likenesses. The legendary characters were regarded as divine rulers or gods, and had great influence over the ancient societies they belonged to. According to the books of Giants and Enoch, the fallen angels aspired to govern and pollute earth in a manner similar to that of these mythical deities. According to ancient writings, the Egyptian Anubis, the Babylonian Lamassu, or the Greek centaurs were all vestiges of the fallen angels' attempts to construct gods in their own image. Could it be that, contrary to what the fallen angels hoped, these fabled creatures were real rulers of ancient civilizations, rather than just fantasies? The idea of whether our ancestors worshipped beings formed from the strange couplings of fallen angels offers up an intriguing and disturbing line of inquiry. We can have a better knowledge of the secrets of our history and even the beginnings of the gods who once ruled over humanity thanks to these linkages between ancient texts and mythology from throughout the globe. Whether they were Egyptian, Greek, or Babylonian, the characters and gods we encountered in mythology were more than just allegorical or symbolic creatures. They ruled the societies of their day as heavenly monarchs, magnificent creatures with immense power and grandeur. The ancient Egyptians considered the pharaohs to be heavenly emissaries, and they had an innate bond with the gods. The gods gave the pharaohs their power, and they served as a bridge between the divine and the mundane. Similar to this, the gods were essential to the creation and upkeep of justice and order in Babylonian mythology. They were thought to directly control all that happened on earth, including human affairs and natural occurrences. The story of the fallen angels reflects this idea of divine domination. The Book of Giants and the Book of Enoch both claim that fallen angels came to earth with the intention of ruling as well as corrupting. Like the characters in mythology, they wanted to become recognized as gods. The resemblance is too great to ignore. It offers a deep new viewpoint to consider the possibility that the gods of mythology, from Anubis to the centaur, were relics or embodiments of the fallen angels' effort at heavenly dominion. These creatures, who were half animal and half human, may have ruled ancient civilizations in reality rather than only being fabled entities. These hybrid creatures might have been created by the fallen angels in their quest to become gods to reign over humanity. In addition to making connections between myths and ancient writings, this theory broadens our perspective on the past. The myths and legends that have been passed down through the ages may be more than simply fantastical tales. They may also provide the key to deciphering the secrets surrounding our ancient civilizations and the gods who once governed them. Taking a step back, 
Let's examine the Tower of Babel, a key narrative in the book of Genesis, to gain even more perspective. According to the story, following the Great Flood, all of mankind spoke the same language and assembled in the region of Shiner, where they made the decision to construct a tower that would reach the sky. But God confused their language because he saw their togetherness as a possible threat, which led them to disperse around the planet and give rise to many cultures and civilizations. Some of the greatest and most significant civilizations in history, such as Phoenicia, Egypt, Babylon, Greece, and China, sprang from this scattering. Despite their differences in language and location, these civilizations were united by their veneration of gods that were either partially animal, partially human, or possessed other supernatural qualities. Is it possible that the efforts at divine domination by the fallen angels were a legacy of these civilizations that sprang from the same spot at the Tower of Babel? For instance, the Egyptians had their own pantheon of animal-headed gods, such as Anubis and Bastet, while the Phoenicians worshipped gods like Baal and Astarte. The people of Babylon had their the Greeks had their own pantheon of gods, which included hybrid animals like the centaur and guardian deities like the Lamassu and Kush. In contrast, the Greeks had a pantheon of gods that included hybrid animals like the Minotaur and Centaur. There are stories and traditions about dragons and other supernatural creatures that supposedly formerly roamed the land, even in China. Making the connections between the legendary gods, the fallen angels, and the Tower of Babel reveals an intriguing story that transcends all civilizations and cultures. It suggests a potential shared basis for these civilizations' myths, based on the fallen angels' attempts to construct creatures in their own image to reign over humans and their longing for heavenly rulership. In summary, after exploring ancient texts, myths, and historical accounts, we have discovered a complex network of relationships that appear to indicate a common theme. A relationship between the gods that the ancient civilizations worship, the fallen angels, and the hybrid creatures they produced. According to this theory, the gods of Egyptian, Greek, Babylonian, and even Chinese mythology were probably not only imaginary creations, but rather the remains of the fallen angels' attempt to exercise divine dominance. Given their shared hybrid traits and dual functions as heavenly beings or rulers, the similarities between the descriptions of the fallen angels and the legendary gods are too great to be disregarded. Moreover, the dispersal of people following the Tower of Babel may have acted as a trigger for the dissemination of these myths and ideologies throughout many societies, with each one modifying and developing the story in accordance with its own cultural milieu. Although this theory is exciting and provides new research opportunities, it's vital to remember that these interpretations and linkages are derived from a variety of texts and myths. There are a lot of intricate riddles surrounding our ancient past, and we might never be able to fully understand the meaning behind these intriguing tales. However, we may honor the heritage of our predecessors and the intricate web of human history that has been created over millennia by continuing to investigate, query, and seek understanding. The search for knowledge is an endless adventure that can lead to the discovery of the most startling and enlightening truths about our origins and identity. The next video talks about the complete history of angels, cherubims, seraphims, and watchers. Watch the video now.